Friday, 12th of January, and welcome to another episode of the Tea and Trails podcast. Episode 54. This week we chat with dragon slaying Simon Roberts ahead of the 2024 Winter Spine Race. No brew with the coaches because one of our coaches is busy moving across the world. Find out more next week. But we do have an awesome Tales from the Trails. We pop over to Strava and we share our weekly deets. Also, we've got loads of partners who share some awesome codes with our patrons. We have Precision Fuel and Hydration, Tiki Boo Mountain Fuel, Outdoor. Active Vela Forte, Silver Sweden, Active Root, the Centurion Running Store, Protein Rebel, SportsShoes.com, Big Bubble Hats, X Miles, Bornside Farm Cottages, You Go Cook Projects, Red Bear Sports, Summit Crazy, and Ultra Trails 2. If you'd like to save some money and support the podcast and our partners, then please consider joining Patreon. We could not do this without you guys. Also, pop over to Summit Crazy if you'd like to buy some awesome tea and trails merch. I know. They have increased their product lines over there. Got a message from the Summer Crazy guys with a new tech running top. So yeah, check that out if you're interested. Thank you to Precision Fuel and Hydration for sponsoring this week's show. So much knowledge, so much good stuff. I've already had two Precision Hydration Electrolyte uh, 500 tablets this morning, Gary. Oh, wow. <laughs> winning. But pop over at precisionhydration.com. We shout about it on every episode. But if you get cramps, if you struggle from nausea, if you struggle to get the calories in, go over there. There's an answer for everything. They know everything about anything to do with fueling and electrolytes. Uh, pop over there. There's also a really handy planner. If you are somebody that likes to really sort plans out, I saw the difference between our podcast guest, Simon Roberts, this week and James Nobles of their preparation for checkpoints. One was in every bag had been labeled, packed different, all the calories, all the tops, and one had just chucked everything in a bag. Not throwing anyone under a bus, but uh, that's the difference. Not saying either's right or wrong, but that's the difference between James and Simon. I'd labelled it all up, but then over the days it would just turn to chaos. I remember at the end. <laughs> I was on so, I don't even know that if that's my bag. <laughs> Super stoked to have Precision Fuel and Hydration as our main sponsor. And even if they weren't a sponsor, we would recommend you jump on a call with one of their sports scientists and patrons, get 15% off. And anyone can get 15% off their first order with the code T, as in a cup of tea, T24. Super simple, all caps, T24. Why is it 24? 2024. <laughs> 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 do you do that with your kids when there's something really simple and they think they're so clever on things? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, gotta boost them up, boost them up. We should do this. I listen to other podcasts and they just pre-record the intro when it is quite repetitive. <laughs> I hate a pre-recorded. I like that it's a bit different. You always mumble over your words. We yes. it's, it's time and effort. We're not pre-recorded people. We are true, everyone. True. We're not copy and paste. We are not copy and paste. It's individual and it's right there for you. How are you, my friend? It just feels like a long time. I think we mentioned before, we don't really have much to do with each other once the podcast is over. <laughs> no, dude, it's just you're not very friendly. You're not a sort of True. like you're not a sort of like everyday vance kind of guy, are you? You're like, but if I no. I think I force myself on you a little bit more. Like I send you pictures <laughs> of the kids and stuff and you're always like, oh that's really nice, Eddie. Yeah, okay. You're just a work colleague. Back off. <laughs> <laughs> it's very apparent over the years. I am not that person. I'm not that friend. Um, when I see the relationship, I think I mentioned it before that I could do better. I mentioned it last week. That's one of my New Year's resolutions. Be, be a better, be a better friend. Um, yeah, I am going well. Should I do my week or should we go, go on? Come your... on, I can't wait. Well, yeah, 2020, 2020s are back on the menu. It wasn't great. Uh, Robbo called me out because of my miserable description over, <laughs> over on Strava. And it wasn't. I think this is just the way that my training is going to be because I feel quite time pressed at the first 20, I had to visit my dad. So I did that on the way. Then the second 20, I had to do a, it was a real busy road. So I stood there for yonks. And then obviously your heart rate goes down. So you're not, it's not, it wasn't a proper workout. I did do the 20, you 20, 20. You just watch where you're just like, whoop, another minute. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about that actually. And I did stop the watch uh, because yeah, it would have been awesome just to lose some of those minutes. So yeah, it wasn't great because this Garmin training plan has three quality sessions. So this is what I'm going to do in the future is if I hit two, 
then I won't do, if I two and I'm happy with the workouts, then I won't do the third. But like this week when my 2020 20 wasn't great, I then did my third workout. But the other workout, which I really did enjoy because it got back with the group, the Thirsty Thursday crew, but it wasn't that thirsty because everybody, bar one, I think is on dry January. So they're all, we're all there drinking lime and sodas. <laughs> Still nearly 20 quid for a round of bloody soft drinks, which is yeah. insane. Yeah, crazy. But this was six times five minutes with a one minute recovery. And my goodness me, by the time you catch your breath and you look down at your watch and there's 30 seconds gone already and then your watch starts beeping, it's like, sheesh. But yeah, really good. And there must have been half a dozen of us there. So I really enjoyed that. It's real uh, blue collar workout around the industrial estate, running around and around in a figure of it. I enjoyed that. And then on Sunday, off to the gym. If anyone looks at my Strava, I had to redo the whole I did a manual entry on Strava because so I ran to I, I ran to see my dad again, ran Rex, ran to the gym, then went on the treadmill. So it was a real mix up of workouts. But ultimately, the quality session in the middle of that was two times 10 minutes. And I think it was a two minute recovery, 15 percent incline, about five miles an hour. Yeah, dripping with sweat at the end of that. But my, <laughs> it was really good. And it was the first time ever, like all of the treadmills were being used and that has never happened down the gym. But luckily somebody gave one up for me. So that was really sweet of them. My, <laughs> <laughs> well, I was trying to, one of them wasn't working. So I was trying to find the on and off switch, but then they were like, took pity on me and just said, just go, just go on this one, Gary. It's fine. My long runs, I'm finding this might be again, because I'm just whinging about how pressed I am for time. It was broken up under three runs. So I went out with Robbo in the morning. Then I took Rex out then. I think it was Lisa and I went out for a run. So all in all, I think I did about 16 miles over the day would just split up into three runs and I was beating myself up about that. But then I remembered, I think, oh goodness me, it might have actually been Sally McCrae's podcast when she was talking about when she first got into running, juggling life, being a parent, you know, dropping kids off at school. I'm pretty sure she mentioned that is how she got a lot of, of her training days in, just breaking up these sessions. Not ideal, but still, yeah, quite a lot of time on the feet. So two good sessions, one meh session and... Not a proper, but a long run. Three strength sessions too. So we nailed all that. George and I went to the gym on Friday to take a friend on Friday. So me and George went down there, 78 miles, 16 hours. And even though I'm not chasing elevation at the moment, still just under 7,000 feet. So yeah, from a trainer point of view, that is okay. Outside of training, ugh, I think <laughs> I think I might remove facebook from my phone still mulling it over um it's really there's loads of good on facebook you know i love seeing people's runs i live seeing all the wild ways all of that that's fantastic <laughs> but then i end up in a little rabbit hole of watching these i think they're the reels or the shorts or whatever it is it could be like dash cam karma so i'll end up watching half an hour of people cutting people up and then they skid into a ditch and uh <laughs> and I know that's what Facebook Honestly, yeah, I take an I don't have Facebook or Instagram on my phone. I have Facebook on my computer and I go on it to check the tea and trails group. And yes. that's a that is a wonderful place to be to comments. I love <laughs> I love the chats on there. Um and I comment, I look on that. And I do that in the morning while I have my cup of tea, while um, and I eat my breakfast, and then I close it down and I don't look at it again for the rest of the day. And Instagram, I load it onto my phone on a Friday to share the podcast, check up on messages, have a quick look at what people are doing. Yeah. But then and then I take it off again and I don't look again for the week well, later. Just really I mean, weak. From a business point of view, it's not great, you know, if you want to build your social media platform, if that's what you want to do. But yeah. from my own personal, like, wait, I am so busy. What a waste of time. There's no, there's no, there's nothing you get from it, is there? There's like no, um, there's no. Uh, well, it must be hitting something. There must be kind of uh, activating the endorphins dopamine. or whatever. Yeah. When I'm watching the dopamines, yeah, when these uh, guys yeah. are doing know. whatever they're like, doing all from Facebook. It's not but like Facebook used to be where it was actually a way you kept in contact with your friends nobody posts on facebook anymore so it's not all the all just a, like a handful of friends you seem to see i wonder if you could because yeah it's got so many wonderful things on there i wonder if i could filter it out because you know we've got family in canada and finland and friends you know when i was studying down south people down south who are still like to see what they're up to so i'm going to lose something if i delete it but in the scheme well, you of... You don't need to delete it, but you just have to, I think, this isn't for everybody, obviously, but I just think going on it purposefully 
and then taking off again is well the first thing i'm going to do is delete oh sorry stop apart from whatsapp and messenger stop all notifications because if i don't get that little bell yeah and also you just you, there was a did you see I, I deleted it there was something on the facebook group of my eyes but i've never oh. seen Oh, somebody <laughs> put in and posted something <laughs> that I should never have seen. I saw something on some messenger he chat and I took myself time. out of the chat. <laughs> Nobody else was. Let's just leave it at that. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. So I think initially we will turn off the notifications and see if I can exercise some self-control. I don't think you can. I don't think you can. Honestly, I have to, I can't. I have to not have it. Otherwise, yeah. I, I, I just think they're picking up the phone. Like it's just, um, yeah. it's an addiction as soon as you're bored and since I took it all off my phone beginning of December I think I did it and now you know we sit and I mean I sit and watch mindless tv for half an hour with Bryn but I used to just sit and scroll through my phone yep, and yep I just yep. watch the mindless tv <laughs> um I don't know so we'll I see know. we'll see how that goes but sometimes and I'm honestly I'll so I'll hear a ping and because I don't know if it's important or not yeah. I'll check it uh, so I've left Messenger on and I've left WhatsApp on because there's a few groups over on WhatsApp that, uh, yeah, I do like to see what's oh, going yeah. on. WhatsApp. <laughs> <laughs> what else have I done? Yo, I joined the uh, Fell Running Association, but I cancelled my long distance walkers association at the same time. I just wasn't using it. Uh, and it was only like 16 quid or something. It wasn't the kind of major financial well, burden. But Gareth, the it's car- Cancelled, cancelled yeah but i joined the fell running and i renewed my marathon club subscription too i've got an ultimate direction review coming up soon we've got that fast pack 30 and i posted a picture i think it was probably instagram and then i had a few messages in my dms basically asking me if i was doing the spine race <laughs> oh guys i never thought <laughs> you couldn't even get out of email i don't like it <laughs> No, don't want to disappoint anybody, but I am not. I'm not doing the spine race and no plans, no plans to do it either. And yeah, we need some clarification on these Uno rules. There's Uno carnage. Ooh, if you had a, oh, your ooh. hand and you had uh, two threes, for example. Put them all down, th- Gary. Put them oh, all down. Is, no, 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 no. That is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and even, see, this is something I learned because I would put, see if I had, uh, so someone put a two down, then I would put a two down, then the next person in three would pick up four. Well, apparently yes. you can you can't do that. If you if someone plays a two, you miss you pick two up and miss a goal. Oh no! I but think... I love the I love the pick up eight if you drop two fours because that is just oh, like bad. Somebody bah. said there was another like there's like an Uno extreme. Yes, I saw that. Pick up, uh, <laughs> Twenty-seven or something. I I'm always on a speed as well because nearly always if you're playing a game with a small child, it's you're either filling time or. It's a painful process. And so I'm always like, yeah, lay as many cards as you want. Let's get this done. Let's get this done. But I couldn't remember what you said. Did you say, oh, wow, you can put actually multiple cards down at any one time? Yeah, that is, for sure. That is oh, my right. God. Next time we meet up, wherever, whatever, whatever, during a race, wherever, get those Uno's out and let me absolutely destroy <laughs> Isn't it just the best, the best card game for a family, though? Because I think a child can play it from when they're about like, four really and then yeah. it's just all the rages i love all the rages well it goes from like you're really satisfied and smug to distraught and rage <laughs> a bit like ultra running it's all going so well and then suddenly it's a disaster <laughs> <laughs> but yeah that's my week pondering over the old social media that's week two of training so 78 miles and a couple of good sessions and a long and a kind of weird long run but yeah i'll take that i'll take that so yeah all in all Pretty good. What about you? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Mixed bag, you know, mixed bag, Garrett. Highs and lows of the last week of the Christmas holidays. Building my running back up. I'm just watching my little Strava bar go up a little bit more, up a little bit more. Um, I was going to do a little bit more than I planned, but the snow came. And so it was like, ski or run? Uh, We all know what I chose. What I chose. Uh, Yeah, I did two one hours. I always think like once you get back to an hour, that's good. Did one hour around town. Only got hit once with a pair of ski poles. And then I did one hour chasing Bryn decided he was going to go and ski tour. So that's when you climb up on your skis and uh, ski back down before we took the kids all skiing. After, sorry, after Totret, how has Bryn's running been? Silence. 
says it all. Um, <laughs> he, listen, he said after Top Dread, that's it. I'm not being mentioned on the podcast anymore. So oh, sorry, he's only allowed to be mentioned in loosey goosey situations. But uh, so he went off on his skis, and then I left about 20 minutes later, quite thick, like ankle deep snow, not like mega snow for us. And so I chased his. I was following his little ski tracks up in this like blizzard with the dogs. I didn't tell them because I didn't want them to be disappointed in case we didn't catch him. And just where like the track finishes and you can't get any further on your feet, I thought I might just catch him. Oh my God, I was blowing out of my behind <laughs> up this hill. I'm not the fittest. And I also was in the snow and I was like, and the day before I'd done my weights, which we'll talk about in a minute. Oh my God, I was like, oh, oh baby. Even though I had my music on, I could hear my breathing over the top of the music. Anyway, we caught him just at the top as he was about to like head into the into the unknown. Um, so that was good. Felt pretty good. And then uh, ran back down. I wore all my clothes, warm clothes. So I was boiling on the way up and then I was freezing on the way down. I did not get my haven't got my layers right on that really hard when it's that cold. And then you put in a bit of effort. Basically, I shouldn't put in any effort and then I wouldn't be sweating um started my new strength plan gary can't i don't think i mentioned this on last week's podcast no but i have recruited the help of a really good local pt who i've never worked with before but i know from various everyone knows everybody in morzine so i had a uh, i had an hours like meeting with him which actually was about three hours as we walked through everything uh us like-minded people were just like sharing knowledge our knowledge hub and initially he was like he wasn't sure about helping me because he was like, I don't, you know, I don't know you runners. Are you open to change? Are you open to learn? And then after a while, he realized I just wanted, no, I wanted to change, wanted knowledge. I wanted some help to progress my strength because I get lazy in the gym and I do what I like. I do what I know. And I, and as I've learned from the two sessions I've done with him, I have been cruise control. You know, I do the, the like core, the conditioning, but I, so he's, he set me uh, two sessions so far. And I, so I just sort of like tried the first one, a few things. I was like, holy cow, I'm not going to do too heavy. This sounds horrendous. And then today I did it like full on and I had to I had to lie down in the gym at the end of the uh strength session then I got myself up cleaned you know you have to clean stuff and put it all away got to the changing room had to have another little like lie down oh and my goodness me <laughs> I, I couldn't lift my arms to get my sports bra off I was like oh my god my poor legs let's just say the, the strength session finished with 24 squats, 24 lunges, 24 jump squats, 24 reverse lunges. This is after two hours worth of work. And that just, and I was like, sent him the red face emoji. And he's like, I just gave you the quarter of that session. Oh, what? oh my God. Anyway, I'm really enjoying it. A lady my age needs to lift weights, needs to lift heavy, and it feels really nice to be doing something different, especially in the winter when we can't I can't get out in the hills. It's highlighting some weaknesses and when we talk about what my next race is gonna be, I and I really feel that this is what I need to be doing. So it's so uh, different to my gym sessions. I'll go to the gym. No, but it's so different from my normal gym sessions as well. I lift the weight. I lift, say, six to eight, whatever reps. Then I'll be on my phone for a minute <laughs> and then I'll go again. I'm not, I'm not yeah. tired. <laughs> yeah, I think I think there's a purposeful gym going, isn't there? And then there's kind of like, yes. Uh, anyway, maybe I will inspire you all to try maybe lifting a little heavier a little less rest or a little more I don't look at my phone the only time I look at my phone in the gym is to mark that I've done the exercise and what weight I've done and then to move on because I'm literally trying to oh, so do you have an app that you can tick yeah. off yeah so this is cool as well because I've wanted to do an app for my own coaching and because training peaks which I use for my clients you just have to write the strength out and then okay. you can't monitor it unless people write long comment and it's quite difficult so it is something I'm looking into so this yeah this app is really good if we remember from the spine I got such bad tendonitis in my arms from holding yeah. the pots. So that is something that I we're working on together as well as that arm strength. Um, so watch the space, watch Eddie become. I love it. Always learning, always growing. Oh, I love learning. I love yeah. learning new stuff, trying new stuff. It gives me more ideas for my clients. It gives me, it also like highlights, like when I think, oh my God, you can't. 
hey, you can't get fitter than me. And then I'm like, oh my God, I'm so not as fit. I want to be an all round athlete. I think I'm turning that, you know, I want to be like, not just being able to run long distance at a slow pace. I want to be I want to be more powerful. I want to be able to move speeds. I want to be more robust. Whereas before I used to just be obsessed of like how many miles I could run a week. And now I'm just like, I actually want to, uh, and whether that's something to do with like my age and stuff. Also with the kids, the kids are just like, mom, if I can't do stuff that they can do, they're they're like, thought you're an athlete when I'm like, oh my God, buddy. It's hard. It's really hard. I had to, I went up the stairs and receptionist on the gym was like, are you all right, Eddie? And I was like, I almost, we need an emergency button in the changing room so you could deliver me a shake because I almost didn't make up the stairs. So it's hard, but um, it's all good. I did, I can't remember how many turbos, did it quite a few, tur- few turbos. I don't know whether I'm sad or not that the power is coming back. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it feels good. I'm able to start pushing a bit more power, but is that good or is that sad? Who knows? I've only got three gears on my bike there, Gary, and I must, I keep thinking, <laughs> I've got to sort them out. What's happened to your bike? I don't know. The gears are slipping and it's not working. But I keep forgetting and then I get on it. And if it gives me a workout which requires big watts, the gear slips and it really hurts. And then then the kids learn new swear words. I'm like, oh, my God. I either have to not do that or I have to sort it out. But it's the sort of thing that's on the to-do list and I never get around to it. Back on the Pilates train, if anybody doesn't do Pilates thinking about it, thinking... It's just waving your legs around. Um, If you've had babies or you've got a bad back or you're getting into running, perhaps uh, you're getting a few niggles anywhere, really. Pilates. If you get a good teacher and I do mine online, I don't do it in a class because I can't get to a class. Um, I just do it in the evening and it is amazing. It's amazing for my back. Again, like somebody making you work hard in the gym. I would never work that hard if I followed a YouTube video ever. But the fact that I'm doing it and I've got mates that do it too so we like wave at each other on zoom a little sneaky look when I'm when she's like and lift your legs and hold your legs and she's like you don't have to have straight legs and then I look to see if they've got straight legs so I'm like I must have straight legs too and, I, and then I'm always waiting all the way through she probably only says like one comment per person for the class and I'm just waiting to, for her to say good work Eddie and we to go excellent <laughs> <laughs> well, I love it, but it's the sort of thing that I drop really quickly when I'm busy and I'm like, no, don't have time. But just like anything like that, when you do it, you feel so much better. And I really, honestly, from having three children and I still slightly wet my pants every time I run downhill or somebody jumps out at me, I have to constantly work on my pelvic floor. And it's probably, I just can't do that unless I do Pilates because it's so like moving those tiny core muscles. And that's the only exercise, you know, squats and everything. They're good for strength, but you've got to do those like little tiny exercises. So even if you had your babies years and years ago, like me, keep working, Gary, keep working. On so would your pop- Pilates be a different, is this Pilates workout that you do? Is it all ladies or is it a mix? Oh, thing? no. Oh, no. It's a real, it's a, and it's a real mixture of ages, sizes, shapes. But I tell you what, that doesn't matter because I am, I am definitely the worst in the class <laughs> of like tight hamstrings. I also make the most noise and make the most complaints when she's like, oh, and I'm like, no. <laughs> I used to be quite smug. I could used to put my legs behind my head uh, and quite Why? late. Like, I must have been about 40 when I could do that, but not any more, unfortunately. No, you've got to fight that hamstring shortening all your life. And I'm sure that skiing is so bad. The boys' hamstrings, Evie is super flexible because she does ice skating and so she can lift yeah. her leg above her head. The boys can't even touch their hamstrings like guitar strings. They can't even touch. <laughs> when I go in the abductor machine, you know, it kind of stretches oh. the legs out. I literally think I'm going to rip something. It's uh, <laughs> it's not a good feeling. <laughs> it's a lovely sight though, Gary. On the abductor machine. <laughs> uh, yeah, we did, we did a ton of skiing. Um, we did a ton of skiing together. That very rarely happens because the kids are always at ski training. Bryn and I went one day by ourselves again that's a luxury oh my god the weather so you have a winter you have whiteouts quite often when you're just in the clouds and you can't see anything uh, like you couldn't you know when you've been up in the moors you can't even like really see your hand in front of your face and then you try skiing down a vertical slope you can't see what like you don't know what's up what's down you can't see the snow so you literally have just got to like lean into it and just like turn your skis and you hit if you hit like it's a core exercise because 
because you're like, oh, but it was our only chance to ski. So we're like, gonna, and so it was not only totally white, we couldn't see. You just have to follow the piste marker to marker to know that where you are. But it was like this ice snow. So it was freezing this our lenses so the minute you started skiing the snow like stuck to your lens and then as oh, that you sounds scary you, you the vision <laughs> went it went it went and then we'd end up we'd go one centimeter left and then we'd have to stop we developed a tactic of i was just scraping at my goggles and that was it was triggering brin of my very expensive oaky ski goggles he was like I was like, I don't care. I don't want to die. Uh, and then we developed a tactic of if you took your hand out of your glove and wet it to moisten the goggle a little bit, it did give you minor permafrost on your hand back in. Then you got your wipe and wipe the goggles. And literally like every whoa, minute you had to do that because it was extreme. But I always think that's quite good trait. All that sort of stuff of like handling yourself in that terrible. <laughs> Sounds horrendous. <Eddie. laughs> Sounds horrendous. And we were like, <laughs> I kept going. <laughs> to hide Brent. He was like, that's really upsetting me because I keep thinking that you're having some sort of drama. And I was like, it's just my reaction to hitting ice and bump. Um, but it was, it was fun. And the kids were all skiing in it. One of them was skiing all day in that. So we were like, if the kids are out, we can't be... Yeah can't ski down. We did go in for a hot chocolate halfway through. And the guy said, oh, my God, have you two fallen over? Do you need to drive? Your stuff back? As we were like, oh. for some reason, we thought it would be a really good idea to go up to the highest chairlift because we thought e you can't see anything anywhere. So we might yeah. as well go where there's nobody. And then at least we're not going to crash into anybody. But we literally couldn't see like Bryn was just in front of me. I, cu I couldn't see him. Oh you just, had to, it was, it was it probably the worst conditions. And I found since I've had kids that I have real problems, not with my balance, but things like a swing or a roller coaster, I get really sick. Like it really, it makes my stomach go. It must be something hormonal or something. Anyway, so then like when you're not expecting it and you drop down on the skis, I, f I find it gives me a bit, I think it's a bit motion sickness. Anyway, it's all first world problems because we're, living the dream out uh skiing around and we treated the kids final bit of our week they'd finished their ski training oh my god Gary they had Christmas day and New Year's day off they skied every single day for three to four hours their lips are like um all tattered from being like wind totally wind bone their cheeks they've already got like these goggle marks it was, Imagine the amount of calories they're burning because they're growing you know, people well I know humans. because I pay the car for food bill when I'm like Okay, so here's your chicken, here's your roast potatoes, here's your pudding. And then I just literally finish wiping the table and they go, Weetabix, yeah. can I have six? And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> anyway, we treated them to a meal out, which is quite a treat because Lord above, it was the my monthly salary to um for them but they they had fondue cheese i mean it, it's upsetting for me the charcuterie board that comes out full of all this raw meats but they're just like give it all give it all i love a family meal out even though it costs us so much money because it's so nice they talk to us if we when we eat at home meal times are like who eats the quickest to get the pudding the quickest and to go uh can i get down now please okay or to get in the chocolate drawer in the ridge um and i just sat i sat there at the meal thinking oh so lucky it was so lucky but you kids are so lucky because they can just sit they order away totally bilingual chatting away they can ski amazing they are um uh, uh, and then as soon as i speak to the waitress she's like oh you're english <laughs> they look back and they're at the age now i think they'll remember those moments too they're like mom please when we ski together, they're like, don't come down here, mom. You'll run <laughs> off. Just go down that side. Mom, you won't like this. Don't do that. <laughs> I can't remember what it was, but something I said to George down the gym and I triggered him and he gave me the daggers. I'd embarrassed <gasps> him in public. Oh, yes. I don't know so what it Evie doesn't even let me take her into the school playground anymore. She's only eight. She's like, don't come in. Don't come in, mum. <laughs> anyway, it was, it was lovely. Long holidays. Oh, my gosh. The house... Freud, but a lovely time when they're that young and I know we're slowly creeping towards as you already are the kids aren't going to want to be with us and they want to go silence but, you'll go yeah. for a meal out and nobody will talk to each other so <laughs> that's what you've got to look forward to <laughs> you need that's when you need to take a note <laughs> yeah <laughs> But I'm pleased. I'm pleased with the way the training's building back up, how the body is feeling. Oh, and oh, I'll talk about that next week, but all good. And now 
head down a little bit of focus and um, moving on to exciting an exciting 2024. Norbury with the coaches this week. I thought we had two in the bank last week and we only had one. So apologies. That is my fault. We must have, when I looked at the recording, there was loads left. So me, you and oh, Trish must so have just been nattering away. <laughs> so yeah, apologies for that. And we do have a bunch of questions to put to the coaches. So if you're thinking, hang on a minute, I sent an email in ages ago. No, no, we're going to put them to the coaches. But yeah, keep them coming in because we will schedule a call again soon. And Patreons, email them in to hello at tantrails.com. I love seeing the fruition of people that have asked a question at Brew with the Coaches. And we'd spend quite a lot of time talking about that question, don't we? So we kind of know the person, we think about the person, but we don't know them. And then if they jump onto Facebook and say, we saw Trish jumped on and said she'd won a race. What yeah. did you get past the Brew with the Coaches? And I love, I love of the symbolism is that the right word not really but you know what i mean guys you get it like coming together of people that are listening and then they tell us how they went on and i also just love the total um not audacity but the total truthfulness of trish and russell no filters get the work done guys (laughs) basically yeah keep it simple get the work done this week simon roberts joins us for a chat i had a blast eddie really enjoyed sharing an hour with simon he was our chat with dragon and Goat slaying <laughs> Simon Roberts. We are delighted to welcome to the podcast Simon Roberts. I know, longtime listener, first time podcaster with us. Uh, it's been too long. He's probably been sulking because he uh, he's a specific part of a crew of runners who perhaps we've I've had almost all of them on the podcast his rivals in arms and uh we've wanted Simon for ages and now we've got him uh hi Simon happy new year how's it going Edwina happy new year and happy new year Gary happy new year Simon We've just been all moaning because we everyone was back at work today. And it's a bit of a shock. So it's super kind of Simon to come on this evening. We always start our podcast in the same way. Where are you? What's the view from your window? And have you been for a run today? So I am in pont de Prive in South Wales. The view outside my window is pitch black with pissing down rain and wind. <laughs> um, I've got the same. <laughs> yeah, it's not nice. And I'm not looking forward to going for my run. After this chat. Stop it. Oh, we're so sorry about that. Or I could just go on the turbo trainer downstairs. Uh, (laughs) Tuesday, would Tuesday be a session or was Tuesday, Tuesday would be a session for me. What about yourself? Yeah, same for me. Tuesdays and Thursdays are sessions, hard sessions. But because I'm in taper build now, so uh, no, I won't be doing anything hard. Just go for a little uh, bumble about, I think. Um, I was going to go on my, my local hill is the Garth which is close to the Dragon's Back Day 6 route. So that's that's where I usually go every night. But uh, no, I think I will probably probably stick to the roads if I do go outside. I went turbo today. I I did run this morning and then I looked out this afternoon and I was like, I'm not, no, I'm going on the turbo. Somehow the turbo, I find the turbo easier to get on than the treadmill. Yeah, definitely. Even though you can really hurt yourself on the turbo, Somehow, I don't dread it as much. I don't know why. Yeah, I got a treadmill and a turbo, and I'm always on the turbo. Yeah, that's the easy choice for me. I love that. I love it too. Do you find your turbo translates well to hill climbing? Can you feel that the same sort of... uh, Um, Yeah, Yeah, I think it does feel like when I'm on a a real bike. Yeah, it does. Do you ever go outside or are you a turbo guy? No, I'll go out as well. Um, A few times a month, maybe I'll go out for a big ride. Yeah, so I'm not always running. We've got some more questions about that a bit later. You touched a little bit then about your local trails. Gary is always super curious about (laughs) what people's trails are like around them. You straight out the door, out onto the hills? or I'm straight out the door and it's like a 20-minute run to the Garth for me. It's quite a a famous little hill. There's the Hugh Grant film. Um, What's what's the Hugh Grant film? Um, what's it called? It's, I mean, I forgot what it's called. It's like go up a mountain, a boy, and come down a man, or something. It's called. Okay. It's, it's, it's where the villagers take all the dirt from the gardens up to the top of the hill to make it a mountain. 
Is that story? Oh, is. <laughs> Tell us that what what's the stats of the hill? What's uh, how much climbing do you get? Oh, it's not much. It's only small hills. Only like the summit's like three hundred odd meters. The one half of it is pretty steep, and it's, it's you can do some really good training on it. You've got one Strava segment that's called the Shredder, and it's. <laughs> It's pretty violent and it's cool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is there anywhere near the, I totally, when I did the Dragon's Back race, I totally blanked this. Someone said to me, oh, did you see the, it's not called the Fairy Tale Castle, but it's this beautiful castle. Castle Hall. I totally, yeah. I to, I totally it's ran opposite, past it. It's opposite the valley uh, to Castle okay. Hall. Yeah. yeah. Ah, I see. Well, you, you didn't see Castle Cork when you ran past it. <laughs> no, I must have had my head down in a world of pain. <laughs> <laughs> you must have been because it's pretty big. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably, it was probably live recording on Facebook at the time or uh, something. Yeah, oh, probably. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. And it's, pretty, it's a good looking castle as well. It's stunning. So um, next time you do Dragon's Back, just keep an eye out. Yeah. Oh, next time. Okay, we're going to brush over background as a runner. I'm sure there's loads of We know of you're a runner. We know you're a runner. <laughs> <laughs> but you just had a great win at the TV Goats. Looking at the splits, it looks like a comfortable win. Uh, yeah, but how was the race? Was that the case or were you running scared? Oh, no, definitely not running scared. Yeah, no, it was, um, oh, but it, it's not, yeah, it wasn't chilled. I was, I was racing. And, um, yeah. Obviously, my competition on the day was James, who I'm very familiar with, James Nobles, because we had a, a nice battle in um, Dragons Back 2022. That's right, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, good mates with James now. He's also joined me on Team Montaigne as well. So, uh, it's good to have him on board there. But yeah, no, me and James, we, we were we were yeah, we were racing from the start. How did my race go? Didn't go fully to plan. I was there was some moments where I was really, really struggling. I think I was eating too much. I had too much for breakfast and I had a stitch, yeah, pretty early on and I had a stitch and it just could not get rid of it. <laughs> it really slowed me down. But yeah, that was that was the first problem. But I guess the problems weren't necessarily me, it was just the terrain was a problem this this year. Because we had the snow, had a quite a lot of snow in some areas. And then so Dean at Chivit Goat course, we got the snow and we got the bog underneath it. Yeah. So there's a lot of things for your feet to get through, your legs to get through. And yeah, it was just so slow moving. If you look at like my previous times, because it's the third time I've done this race, I was like, I don't know, it must have been like two and a half hours slower compared to my oh other time. Oh my goodness me. Yeah. And I was looking at other people's times as well, who have done it at the races pre- from previous years. So I was looking at Nikki Spinks' time. And she was also in about two and a half slower, slower as well. So it was pretty, pretty tough moving for that, for that, and the snow and the mud. So you'd be going through the snow, breaking the ice, and then just basically scraping ice down your shin, was that? Yeah. So yeah, it was a nice, nice, good inch and a half of ice. The first... Bunch of bogs we come to. I was thinking, I saw them. I was like, ah, it's all frozen over. This is looking good. And bosh, straight through. And I was like, ah, yeah, shin's the first thing to feel it. But then from that point then, then I was like tiptoeing across the ice, just being really careful. Waiting. Trying. You're just yeah. waiting. <laughs> uh, and I was like, dancing really pretty, you know, across, across the... Uh, Across the ice, and it works. It did work for a bit, but uh, every now and then, though, you just you'd fall through, and yeah, it really hurt. Oh, I saw some pictures. I think it was um, James Parsons who's been in the podcast before, and yeah, it just looked the extra work that you have to do to move over that terrain. It just looked horrendous. But yeah, sell it to me. I've never done it. Simon, and it's pretty close to my neck of the woods. Why should I do the tree big road? 60 miles, horrible weather, unless it's an adjusted year because of uh, storms, and it's yeah, 60 miles of bogs. It is 60 miles now, and they actually advertise it at 60 miles, I think, now, because they've always okay. had it's 55. So, yeah, so we never trust them. But, um, yeah, so it's a 60-mile race um, in the Cheevit Hills in Northumberland, and it's generally just a big peat bog. Um, so well, that's the theme of the race. Um, that's what people will always tell you about the race if you ask them. Uh, it's yeah. about the weather and the bo- and the bogs. Um, why should you do it? It's the people who do it and the atmosphere. That's what I really like about it. When you're at the start line, everybody's there. They're all nutters. Everyone there is a nutter <laughs> and it's just great. Everybody is so up for it. And I love all the build up to it as well. Just people are really buzzing for this race. It's just an awesome atmosphere. Even though there's not a lot of people, like crowds and whatnot, because it's like you start at like five in the morning. Yeah. In a small little village in Ingram, which is, there's not a lot there. It's just a village hall and a cafe and a few houses. It's just a stunning little place, though. But yeah, oh, it's just it's just a great buzz about the race, and everyone's there. They are they are buzzing. It's just, it's really cool. 
So that's a that's a big thing for me. Yeah, I do like that. And then the race itself, it's it's the Cheviot Hills. They're absolutely stunning. I, I love them. And the weather they get there is just it's just so exposed. So yeah. you get battered by weather, bad weather, especially in the winter. Um, so that's what makes the challenge and, that, and that's what makes the race hard. You get moments then when the sun comes up and if, if you, get, you can get a nice day and it is absolutely stunning up there. Yeah, um, It's so bleak and quiet as well. They, 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 I don't think many people actually go there anyway. Um, <laughs> Funny that. It is, it's so far up north, but it's just a, it's, a, it's, a, it's sad really because a lot of people are missing out who don't go up there. It's, it's class. I love it. It's not easy to insert into, is it? It's uh, no. it's like it's like there's not like little roads in and out, and you can drive in. It's literally is the last point of England, isn't it? Yeah. The Scots didn't want. <laughs> <They were like, laughs> yeah, we'll put our border above that bit. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty wild. I used to go there with Sedgefield Harriers. Maybe three or four years, we do a little training camp in a place called Mount Hooley, which was uh, just down below the shill, which is like you know near the Cheviot as yeah. well. And yeah, this was February. Hill. That's the last hill of the spine, and then you take a left of uh, down into the yeah. finish. The Downhill shill. all the way from the shill. Yeah, there was some guy. I never saw this guy actually, but this. Bear in mind, this was February, and you know how remote it is. But he was kind of hunkered down behind the rocks, uh, high as a kite, smoking, smoking drugs. <laughs> oh, I might have embellished that story a little bit. That's the place to do it, anyway. <laughs> well, yeah, and I remember once going up Clough Head on a horrendous day, and there was a guy stoned up Clough Head as well. About February, it was absolutely dreadful. But yeah, Living the dream, <laughs> <laughs> Living the dream. <laughs> when you did it, it was it twenty twenty two? It was an adjusted course because of the storms, and that was. Yeah, it was um, March. Yeah, the race was in 2022, but it was still the 2021 race. So that was that was due to that storm. I forgot, I forgot what that storm was called. Um, oh goodness me! Yeah, I can't then I went up there. See, because it was usually in the beginning of December, and I went up there because they cancelled the race a bit late. They made the call a bit late. I was already there. So I drove all. I drove for seven hours to a cancelled race. So I went to Calder Woods and some of the other woods, and it was unbelievable. The woods were just yeah. completely flattened. Like, like like pancake, it was just mad up there. Yeah, got, got completely, it just got destroyed. The whole place did. Yeah, they think they can't. They moved it because the emergency services were needed elsewhere other than the race. Okay. Yeah, I remember locally there was a lot of um, news about it, and yeah, like you say, the emergency services were pretty stretched, pretty stretched that weekend. Would you prefer though? Looking back, you've done both, obviously winter and uh, spring. Chivy Goat, would you prefer? T shirts and shorts, or do you think it, you it was awesome? It was all that. It was in. It was in March. And it was a it was very mild match as well. So it was yeah, it was shorts and t shirt. That would be, it would be great if they had that like a summer version of that race. Yeah, you see how stunning that place is. Yeah, and it would still be super boggy as well, boggy and shit. Yeah, I think that place never dries out. No, no, no. <laughs> Look at that, and then you'll have stunning views, and you'll be able to have your shorts and t shirt and get some yeah. time. I think people should check it out. I think Chevy, it's. Uh, and the Howgills, you know, much overlooked places in this country. Yeah. Some lovely trails, and yeah, you. There's a good chance if you go to both of those parts of the country, you could have the trails to your own all day long. How's your fitness? Um, you know, I suppose how did you recover after the Chevy Goat? What was your, the week after like? And how's your fitness now? You know, I think it's right to say end of 2022 and 2023 for a good chunk of it, at least. You have had a few injuries. First got injured, Dragons back 22. So I had a shin, big shin problem, which took quite a few months to get over. But then I went straight on to a foot problem after that. And then I went straight into a groin problem straight from that. Oh, problem. my goodness. And then I, so I didn't get running properly until July 2-3. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of time off, just trying to work my way through injuries and sort myself out. I think it was, it was all due to overtraining and over racing in 22 yeah uh, yeah just that's what happened there. it's all built up and um yeah body just kind of just gave up lots of lessons learned there yeah now 2024 yeah i'm feeling good at the moment achieve it goat the week after i was so that, that was like my first big effort of the year my first big race where i was like fit and strong so running properly yeah, yeah i was pretty sore for two days yeah, like having trouble getting upstairs and sitting on the toilet <laughs> and whatnot, which is a good feeling because I haven't had that feeling in such a long time. Um, yeah. But I was thinking, right, yeah, I've, I've earned it. <laughs> yeah, so that week then, didn't do a lot then. Um, like I said, I was speaking like I got my turbo trainer downstairs and I like using that, enjoy that. 
So I was just jumping on, jumping on that for a bit, a few recovery rides. And after a week then, I think I was back running properly then, back doing, to, um, doing some big days with the, the big spine pack. I know you took the win, but was that your goal for GV Goat? Or was it just, you know, a good day out in the mountains? Both. Yeah, no, I was there to win. Felt like I needed to have a win just because I had so much inactivity and so much bad luck in that year. So, uh, yeah, I needed it just to get my uh, my confidence back up. And um, yeah, I definitely done that. So yeah, I'm ready to ready to hammer myself in some races again. Just before we jump into talking about the spine, which obviously I'm desperate to talk about, uh, you sort of touched on it then. So can we just jump into a little bit about, you mentioned about overtraining, over racing a bit in 2022, and then having this cycle of injuries. Emma Walters, um, Patreon, asks the question, have you changed anything in training since your 2022 injury that you sustained during Dragon's Back? It sounds like you sustained injury and then another one another one uh yeah what have you done what have you changed i guess the overtraining and over racing started from dragon's back 2021 where i was never allowing myself any good recovery i was just constantly booking races and doing races so never any good recovery time at all i was just don't know why i was just super keen or maybe i was just a bit too obsessed with racing i just wanted to keep on doing races and winning races um so that was one problem but then the also problem was you know i got in my head to get better what i wanted to get better to to get better was to, to do more even though i think my training for like 2021 drives back was perfect because i was that was my peak fitness but then i got in my head that, and things you read on social media and that is you know oh you got you want to be doing more you want to be doing double sessions and all this and it's a load of crap because <laughs> um, yeah, that's what I was doing. I was just, just loading myself up completely with races and stupid amount of training. And yeah, just doing that for months and months and months on end just led to my body collapsing. So um, to the changes I made then was just to simply stop booking races. <laughs> that was one thing. Uh, be, be smart about it. Um, don't, you know, and because I was also booking like race after race after race after race. Yeah. So you can stop doing that as well. Just do one race, finish that race, then 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 have a look what's next. Don't like pre-plan your schedule because you just can pressure on yourself to get ready for the next race all the time when you haven't even recovered. I think yeah, if you're racing them all too, sometimes they are they can be like an experience. But if you do want to be competitive in them, then yeah, that's a different pressure. With the turbo, you mentioned turbo a few times. Was that something that came after 2022, or has that always been part of your training? Yeah, no, no. It was after after I was injured and I realised I was properly injured and I wasn't not going to be running for quite a few months. That's when I bought my first bike, got into that big time. Yeah, I love riding around the uh, the Ronva Valleys down here. It's the yeah. class roads for riding on. We've got some big hills and stuff. So I got really into the cycling. I then got a bit obsessed. I bought a second bike as well. And then, um, and then here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I bought the turbo trainer as well. So um, hey. this allows me to train without going out in the, in the shitty Welsh weather all the time. But no, I really enjoy the cycling. So that, that's here to stay. And then it also helps with the training then. It means I'm not running every day. It gives my running legs a rest. Yeah, because it's not you can not, it's not much load if you're on the on the turbo trainer doing an easy session. It's good. Just good to keep keep the, the body ticking over if you get a bit antsy and if you need to do something like some of us do. Are you a swift user, Simon? I'm a Swift user, yeah. Yeah. Love 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 Swift in. Do you use it like for workouts? Like do you use their like turbo workouts or Yeah, yeah. I'll always do a workout on there, something that's set by by the by the app. I love it. I just pick one. I look how many reds, I want all the reds. Or sometimes no, I just have blues. Yeah. Or sometimes you pick one and you think, yeah, that looks yeah, I just want the like kind of easy, steady one. I'll pick that one. And then you start it and you go, Holy cow, this is yeah. so hard. <laughs> There's been quite a few workouts where I haven't been able to finish it. I think, no. Oh, I'm my stuck. goodness. <laughs> and there's a, there's a function, Gary, on the side where you can take it down the level, like the power level, and it's yeah. like, I'm always like, just do, just do it. Nobody's around. Nobody's alone. You don't want to press that button, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> I think it's fascinating everyone's approach to training, though. I'm a mileage junkie, you know, and I'm 50-year-old, so I should be a lot more mature when it comes to training. But it's great to hear that, like, you know, people like yourself will lean on, lean you on the turbo. You can change, Gary. You can change you can you know, it's, it's not there anymore it's gone and how how many times did you use it like twice 
well, it's, it's literally just there. Sorry, it's it is there now, but it's all, I I'm reluctant to get rid of it because there will be a day when um you know, I'm injured. yeah so knee I'm hurts again. Um, so yeah, don't yeah, sell it. Don't get rid of it. That's really interesting. And and I hope that people are listening as well who perhaps are in that cycle. I think I think with the increased popularity of ultra running as well, people get the fear that they're going to miss out on races if they don't enter them. Like if they don't have a set schedule of races throughout a year, <clears throat> uh, that they're going to then miss out. But I also think there's great power in being like, I'm just going to do one race this year. Like why there is no need to do multiple, multiple ultras to prove you're an ultra runner. Just focusing on one or two, perhaps a year is, it doesn't. Well, you pick mean- a different race. You, yeah, fair enough. If you want to enter, say the spine or Lakeland hundreds, you've got to do the ballots, but you could tip up to the old county tops, phenomenal fell race. And you could probably enter the week before. So yeah. just pick, pick your races. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely. There's loads of races like that where there is no waiting list or ballots or whatnot. And that's those are the things we should be, you can focus on in it. And they're great as well and easy to get into. Oh, they're all cheaper as well. And most yeah. of the time, you have a better time because there's nicer people. <laughs> and a buffet at the end. That's it. More yeah. food, nicer people. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's talk about the spine, Simon. We okay. are how many let's days it. out? Is it uh, four, 15? 12, 12, 12 days out. Ooh. 12 days out. 12 days out. Is it haunting your dreams? Is it all you can Um Yeah, I think it kind of it has started, I think. Somebody asked me the other day, are you feeling nervous? And I was like, no, nah, I'm not, I'm fine. But then I think an hour of thinking about it, I was like, oh, shit, maybe I am. <laughs> well, the thing I can't, um, I can't get over is towing the line and you know what's coming. Like people that have not done it before, they tow that line with such fresh, youthful, like this is going to be great. I've seen the pictures. It looks brilliant. I can't wait. But you know what's ahead of you. How does it feel like with that wisdom? Do you feel more confident or do you feel a little bit more like, oh, God? I know what to expect-ish. Like obviously, it's the, the pen away throws things you, you can't, can't plan for. And so I guess I'm worried a bit about the race itself. Um, don't know how that's going to pan out. But then, yeah, and I'm also, I haven't really got, uh, it's, hard, it's a hard thing to plan for plan your tactics for this race you can't just have one plan james nobles actually has sent in a question for you <laughs> uh, <do> you? <laughs> now he's like now a deep dive into your racing strategy yeah. uh, um, me, and james, uh, we're, we and james are supposed to have a, a, a call um over the next few days i think yeah we're gonna have a chat Ooh, can so, work um, together we were like running last week but um i couldn't go so uh we need to have a chat so, you have a chat. Yeah. He wants to know whether you're going on feel on. Heart. Oh no, sorry, I did that. Sorry, that's me. I did that. Oh, you did that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm curious, yeah, because I yeah. would, I would run to heart rate, and I think even Elsie Davis for the shared spine. a post. Well, no, 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 not for the spine. I know they're all different, but yeah. You couldn't keep a heart rate monitor on. They're chaffing. After <laughs> the batteries would conk out, wouldn't it? But um, yeah, just generally, I suppose, what's your approach to racing? Yeah, are you were like, say, quite controlled, or are you just completely racing in that moment? Um, yeah. I don't don't do anything with heart rate. Um, I don't have a heart rate monitor. Or, oh, I love it. I don't turn it on on my watch either. I save the oh, battery. Oh, my goodness. Um, yeah, no, I race to feel. Yeah, I know it from redlining. Yeah, um, so... <laughs> Up Jacob's ladder. You feel your red line in. Are you quite rigid though? I don't know if you went into Middleton's probably a bit early for this, but you think I'm going to take a sleep somewhere um, and then you go in there. And I don't know, John Kelly and Dear Moore are having a snooze. Do you think, no, I'm going to change my plan. I'm not going to sleep. I'm going to skedaddle and get out of here. Um, or are you, yeah, would you be kind of pretty rigid to your plan, assuming everything's going well? So in that scenario, Middleton, you've still got a long, long way to go. Yeah, yeah. If they were there chilling, there's no reason to, to kick on from there. Um, you still got a lot of, a lot of time to, to make up. Even though I don't think they chill at Middleton, I think they do just go through. I don't, I'm not planning. I'm not planning my sleep. I'll let I'll just let the sleep happen when it needs to. It's another thing. This race, yeah, you don't know how you're going to be feeling or any point. So yeah. I won't plan to sleep at certain places. I'll just let my body tell me when that's the case. On the spine challenge in North, I had a little sleep on Hadrian's Wall uh, in a big uh, patch of grass, and that was that was lovely. I had like a lovely twenty minute nap. Oh, so yeah, yeah maybe I'll just do that all the way. Just find some, find some nice soft grass and uh, have a lie down. They were the best sleeps I had. They're like, just, you just the al fresco, like, oh, there's a bit of sunshine, there's a bit of sunlight. I'm just going to 
just going to lie down here. And I never slept very well at any of the check. I don't think I slept hardly at all at any of the checkpoints because you fit, you're too hyped. You're too hyped. And yeah, adrenaline's flowing and it's, it's bright. Um, sometimes a little bit noisy in them. Um, you just not, yeah, you just don't feel like sleeping in them, do you? What sort of learnings are you taking from having done the course a couple of times now that you're taking into this? Are you going to go off a little bit faster? No, no, that's something I've learned from these yeah. really, really big ones is you don't need to go off fast because you have so much time to catch people up. I've got a lot of speed in me, so I've, I can use that advantage at any point, really, if I do want to make up time. My first time I did a spine race was 2020, 2020 I think where I did go off hard and I was really hammering my legs and I ended up injuring myself in that first 24 hours. That's, I ruined my race pretty much. So I was walk, walk the rest of it then. So just get through that first 24 hours in good shape, keep the body together. And I think that'll set you up nicely and for the rest of it. Um, so that, that's that's something I'll um, make sure I do. I think that's the best bit of advice for anyone doing any of the spine races, isn't it? It's like... Yeah. If you can get through the first 24 hours, and even if it doesn't go to plan and something goes wrong in the first 24 hours, you've got such a long time to turn it around and not to rush and just to let the race like settle around you and yourself to settle. And then after that, it just becomes a blur of pain anyway. So have you done some big, uh, big recce days with the, the with your pack? Yeah. So I was up in uh, Penang Way um, last week, just before Christmas. I'd done Horse to Middleton. And then on the second day then I'd done just um, a bit of Malham Cove and just a little bit by there then because it, it was pretty shitty weather. So I didn't stay out for too long. Yeah. So be, I've been out on the Penang Way for a few days. Yeah. Even though I, I, I know it pretty well. But uh, yeah, it was good to be out there. Stopped for a beer and a whiskey at the Tanner Hill Inn as well. So that was nice. <laughs> Is there any part of the course that you're particularly looking forward to and maybe, yeah, not looking forward to? And it could be quite different because if you hit the course, say, say last time when you've done it previously and you've got this fond memory, but this time it could be pitch black. So it's a different, lots could change. But in theory, yeah, any parts that you look particularly looking forward to or not looking forward to? Yeah, when I tell people at the race and I talk about, you know, the POIs, yeah, the, the Hadrian Ball, um, Crossfell, all, all those, you know, uh, Penagent and all, all the main, like, tourist attractions. It's yeah. like, yeah, you can see all these beautiful bits of the country, but you're probably going to see the dark, so you won't see nothing anyway. But no, that's, that is what I look forward to, is those attractions on each leg. Kind of a nice way to split it up as well, is, uh, yeah. like, you think, right, oh, I've got, got Crossfell and Greg set coming up, you know, so it's something to look forward to on each leg. Toilets at Dufton. I mean, there's something for everybody. Uh, <laughs> I love how also, like, some of the check, the bigger checkpoints, or even all of them, to be honest, there's, they've really took a sense of ownership. So obviously you've got the famous lasagna, I think, Middleton, there were Shovel and Curry yeah, and um, Shepherd's I'll, I'll Pie start, to everybody. I'll, the Alston lasagna, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all little things to look forward to. Talk us through your drop bag, Simon. Are there any goodies going in there that Gary can pilfer? I'm not going to be there. <laughs> oh, you'd find it though if you found out. Going True, to... yeah. <laughs> Nothing special in my drop bag, really. Just spares. It'd be like, all my food would be in it. What's your nutrition like? I'm one of those guys who do it with gel, just gels usually. But this time is I've got uh, quite a lot of savory now. So I've got pork pies, mass, um, pasties, and sausage rolls. Um, so they'll be my savory items. And I've got quite a lot of that. Um, but then I'll be having chocolate and gels as well. Can I recommend a fisherman's friend for moments of real? <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> it takes the roof of your mouth off. So honestly, I don't think I'd have got through high cup Nick without. She's pouring. setting you up, Simon. Don't listen to her. Oh, <laughs> they're like, oh, and your mouth is on fire, yeah. But... <laughs> Honestly, I reckon there's a secret to it. When you hit rock bottom, then get the fisherman friends out. Okay. <laughs> uh, and tell us a little bit about your kit. Uh, obviously, a montane athlete, so you'll be head to toe in the latest. I will be, yeah. Just, uh, yeah, we look like I've been spewed on by Montaigne. Um, <laughs> uh, um, yeah, so main bits of kit for Montaigne. Main kit that I'm excited about for Montaigne is the, uh, the Fireball Nano mid layer. It's great. Okay, this is good because yeah. that's sort of the, that that's been slightly missing from their kit, hasn't it? That yeah, yeah. Because I had the, the fire, the main fireball jacket. A couple yeah, of years I've ago. got that. I love it. They, is that an insulated different. jacket? Sorry, is that a... yeah, it's insulated jacket. They brought that out, and it, it was kind of like yeah, they wanted to be a bit of like a, a running piece of running kit. 
it was a bit too heavy duty, a bit too um, hot, basically, essentially. So now they got the nano version of it and it's cracking. Yeah, it's awesome. So it's like a little bit of insulation in there, but it's, the, the mid layer is wicked. And it's got a, it's got a water, a water repellent as well. You can wear it on the outside for a little bit if you want. That's a kit I'm very uh, excited about. That'll, that'll be nice and comfy. Um, yeah, you just don't get too hot in it. Yeah, it's great. I don't think you get to on anything in the spine, apart from maybe like just the bit on the road as you start. The rest of it is you're looking for. It's the only race where everyone starts in full everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about what about your shoes, Simon? What's your shoe of choice? Scarborough athlete as well. Um, so I've had a bit of stress about shoes. I just don't know what to, to wear because um, I've been training in a pair of shoes and the. I've walked done some then a few big runs in them, but they just tore my one foot apart. So just it doesn't fit me right the one shoe. So at the minute I'm like, oh I, just, I don't know what to wear. But <laughs> but I'm thinking it could be the um the Scarpa Spin Planet. Okay. So it's a big cushion shoe. Um so I'll definitely be wearing that at points, but then I do want a grippier shoe as well. So yeah, I'm still thinking about and I'm up against time for testing it <laughs> so, so uh, yeah i need to sort that out that's my next thing yeah you could maybe go grippier at the start the first you know of when you move in that little bit better and you're actually uh running that little bit yeah better. yeah that's a good idea when you actually need the grip because and then switch into the cushioned a little bit later on the one thing i wish i'd taken was a size half bigger all right yeah um but I do. I, mean, go, I do go for bigger sizes just because I wear thicker socks on the spine. Do your feet swell up? I know Dragon's Back Race. Yeah, I couldn't get my feet in my shoes, kind of day five onwards. What about yourself? No, it's never happened to me. I've never had swollen feet. So um, what? Yeah. <laughs> That's not fair. Where does it go? <laughs> <laughs> Not that I will ever be uh, shoulder to shoulder you, with you at the race, but yeah, you and James, you're duking it out. Um, is there much chat going on or is it silence? With, yeah, with James, yeah, because James is a really tiny lad. Um, if I like you, I'll talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> Noted, if anyone's listening. <laughs> Bless you. Yeah, if you're annoying, don't, don't bother talking to me. <laughs> I love that. I'd like that on a T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> on your backpack, yeah. <laughs> what pack size you going for, actually? Yeah, there's like 20 yeah. litres, 30 litres? Uh, 20 litre, yeah. The 20 litre gecko, uh, it's more than enough. And I've got space to spare in it as well. Yeah, I've used it before on the Spine North. Um, yeah, it's a great pack. Is that what you had, Eddie? Yeah, wouldn't wouldn't change it. Would keep that. Love it. Still wear it. Super light bag as well. So light. It's cool. I've tried many other bags thinking, I don't know why even, <laughs> thinking, I wonder if there's a better, but it, it fits so well. And as long as you trained with the weight, the way it distributes the weight on your back as well, because I don't like the ones that they sit low, but somehow it's able to... Yeah, if, you pack it, and if, you, if you could pack it right as well, get everything in the right order and work out a, a way of packing it like a Jenga game, then yeah, you, it, it can get you can get really comfortable. Um, and it is still, it's a, it's a race pack as well, it's not a bag, so it still yeah. feels slick and fast. The two packs that stood out from my memory were the Montaigne and there was the Ultimate Direction Fast yeah. Pack or Fast Packer, depending on either the 20 litre and the 30 litre on the Ultimate Direction. I think by far, yeah, I remember those two being the most popular at Middleton. Should we go into some more Patreon questions? Karina uh, Sidhu Strava says you ran 1,000 miles and cycled 1,000 miles. So a fan of cross training. Can you tell us about your training schedule and how you manage it with a full-time construction job she's got some intel yeah who's she <laughs> so she loves Strava um, Simon watch out you might need to block she knows, she knows more than me <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah so not everything's on Strava because I don't wear a watch all the time um, so I do like doing runs without a watch so uh, you know I, I know what hill reps I do I do on the same hill all the time so I don't need a watch for all my sessions but yeah so my training schedule throughout the week is generally, like we said, my hard days are on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So they'll always be running, they'll always be sessions, there'll be intervals or there'll be hill reps. And then I'll also do a session, one session on the weekend, as well as a long run. Um, my long runs are not that long anymore. I have, a, I have a, a, just um, three hours is generally yeah. my classes a long run. 
Um, I don't need. I don't think we need to do any more than that, really. Um, lots of athletes will agree as well that going out for six, seven hours is just not training. Fun. It's just. <laughs> but it's fun, yeah. But I think for me personally, it wipes me out for the Sunday, yeah. Monday. So it's not really very constructive. But yeah, yeah like so Eddie you, says, you, you're cutting, you could be cutting yourself out of the session there just because you're recovering from from long runs all the time. Do you have a coach, Simon? I don't know. No, I coach myself. Do you plan ahead or do you kind of go organic Courtney DeWalter style and see how you feel? Or do you repeat the same sessions? Yeah, it's more or less the same every week. So I don't don't need to plan. Um, maybe my long runs maybe get a little bit more interesting or race specific towards a towards a race. Just generally it, really, yeah. Um as long as I do a session of hill reps or a session of intervals a week um, I'm generally happy with, with how things go then I thought yeah and then the bike um, yeah I'm happy to do so on my, on my easy days then I'm happy just to, to use to swap those days out for bikes bike uh, bike sessions as well and is that you said it's not all on Strava but do you keep a little notebook so you know looking back historically what you've done no not really because right. it's just every, you know, every day of the week is generally the same so uh, yeah okay. Nasty. Do you find like I think what Karina is trying to is that your is your job quite manual and then having to train as well? How do you oh no, that? my job is I'm a construction manager and I am in, at the desk all day. Okay. Yeah, I'm in a nice warm office. I'm not on site. Karina is at the desk. He's not out on the building site. Yeah. He's- yeah. No. Um, yeah. So I'm in an office. You know, eight days, eight, eight hours. He's got a day. the white collar. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I do. I do a lot of traveling now and then, though. Um, so I just need to fit, change my training up now and then if I'm traveling lots. But yeah, no. I'm in the office, finish work, uh, walk a dog, and I'm straight into my session then every day. Apart from when you have to do a podcast, for right? Yes, yeah. Don't make time for that. Yeah. Finishing off Karina's question, she also asks. This is a great one. What's been the toughest moment when you've had to dig deepest in a race? What happened, and how did you turn it around? One of um, Dragons Back 2021 racing your friend, uh, our friend Russell Bentley, on um, on road sections. Uh, that's uh, where I've had to dig deeper than I've ever had to dig before. Dig before. Um, yeah, I didn't. I've never classed myself as a road runner, but I'm um, running next to Russell, who is just relaxed and chilled, breathing lovely, and I am just. Screaming out my ass, and I'm also screaming and grunting, well, just to keep up with him. That was um, those were moments. Uh, it was those were interesting. Well, Russell, that's got a question actually. Yeah, and he'll be so happy. <laughs> he'll be like, he probably will record that and just play it back to himself on the loop. <laughs> <laughs> I've put in the WhatsApp group. Was there anything that you would change uh, in Dragon's Back Race 2022, which could have got you the win? And hi, by the way, and good luck for the spine race. Oh, cheers, Russell. Uh, 2022. So, yeah, that's where um, I didn't finish. I had to pull out on day five. I got into the lead on day five, but then I had to pull out through injury. Um, but, yeah, that race was interesting. So I had a uh, pretty shit time on days one, two, and three. Um, and I generally put that down to it's just, it's just my confidence was just completely gone um, on that start line. I was scared to push myself. I was scared to, like, run hard down hills and up hills um, just just couldn't get in the zone. My, and that my, was in Conway Castle as well, day one, because obviously, you know, you've been successful uh, in yeah. the past. That's amazing to hear. Yeah, yeah. No, just my confidence was just shot. I was making little stupid mistakes, which is all added up. Yeah, just just really, really couldn't get in the zone. I just couldn't push myself. I didn't, I was scared to push myself. So, yeah, yeah. so I wasn't, it wasn't in good shape at all. And I really struggled on those first three days. Day four, I don't know what happened then. It was just... The old Simon just turned up for that day, and then yeah, he absolutely smashed them. Um, and they they were they were the other guys, so James and Chris Chris Cope, they were starting to slow down and struggle. Where yeah. I was pretty much getting stronger then. So yeah, I was, I was starting to smash them, and I was becoming you know I released the evil, as they say, um, <laughs> become a racer again. So yeah, I had a great day four, and day five I was smashing them again. Um, just. I, I think I went into the lead. I was like 
I think on Wednesday, I was like two hours behind leader and I was third. Come day five, and I had a, I was lead, I think, at some point. But then oh, wow. okay. machine went then. Um, so, yeah, so I had a product for, for injury. But, yeah, I think those first three days was just a confidence thing. I don't know how to fix that. I don't know how i do it differently. Yeah. When you take up to a race, if, you, if you're just not feeling it. But I think that, that was my learning from it. I, know, I think I know what went wrong. I don't know how to. I don't know how I do, would have done something differently to uh, get sort that confidence issue out. Yeah, it's amazing because, like you say, you've had success, and you would think that would kind of bring follow you through to the start line again. But if it didn't, yeah, you know. like the start the start line in 2021, I was pretty much a, an unknown then. But I knew there and then I was going to beat everyone, and I was there to beat everyone. I was yeah. that, mental, that mentality. Yeah, I didn't care who they were. It doesn't it didn't didn't matter who they were. But that, that, that none of that the, the year later. Yeah, well, I think it's all learning, isn't it? You've done yeah. that, You've, and you did actually turn it around because you did. You did. You yeah, gave... I did. Um, yeah, I, I start. I I fought every day. I, I kept fighting. Mm. Yeah, you know, just I just couldn't just couldn't run how I usually run on those first three days and. Yeah, just I think as well, maybe the overtraining was kicking in there as well. So, you yeah, that, that was yeah. there. Yeah. Like, I've got, I've not yeah. got, I've got all this training, and where is it? Where's the evil? Yeah. I want doing it all those, doing all those double sessions and whatnot, but um, yeah, just it, nothing happened. It wasn't happening on those first few days. Sharon Dyson, who you'll see at Burness, Sharon, are yeah. you yeah, so the friends of Sharon. So, I know Sharon from all, all the chief foot races and the spine races. So, uh yeah, she's a she's a great great girl. Sharon is great. Right. She will look after you and also laugh at you as you go yeah. like this. <laughs> get out! Get out! Uh, here's a question: What will your Saturday night before the spine race look like? Will you try to get to bed early to bank some sleep, or is this usually a bit futile due to nerves and or excitement kicking in? Will your plan be to carry on through the first night and get some sleep in the second night, or do you will simply run to feel and make a decision on when and where to sleep once the race has gone away? Everyone at Team Burness wishes him well. Oh, I love that. Uh, so we sort of talked a little about about the sleep and that you won't have a plan. So yeah, what will Saturday what will Saturday night look like for you? Every night before the race, yeah, I don't sleep. I try to, but I don't. I don't stress if I'm not sleeping though, because I I know what happens. You know, yeah, um, I probably won't sleep at all. I'll just be pacing up and down a hotel room in my pants. I might take the feet. will <laughs> <laughs> be pacing up and down a hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'll be repacking my bags about 20 times, making sure yeah. it fits there. Um, <laughs> general big ball of mental health. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a it's messy so night. Ho- it's so horrible, isn't it? That night before something, yeah. where you're just your whole being is going, what the hell? Why am I do-? And you need to sleep, and yet you're like totally, and it becomes, it's like nighttime anxiety, isn't it? It just becomes bigger than, and then probably fall asleep about four and have an hour and you're like yeah what? yeah it's it's not fun but uh, i just accepted it it is what it is that's what happens um so that's, that's what i will be expecting to do what about um, the week before though are you like you know maybe wednesday thursday friday sleep's okay or are you stressing um, too? yeah um, it's generally not because I'll, I'll still be working until friday um so i think yeah i'll still be feeling quite normal i, I know yeah that the saturday night will be messy uh, <laughs> and not in the not in our when we're in our twenties. Sort of. Do they have weight limits with the drop bags? Yeah, I'm not too sure. Yeah, yeah so you can't go over uh, twenty kilos. Um, okay, yeah, so similar to Dragon's Back Race. Yeah. yeah. What does your uh, What does your taper look like now for the next twelve days? Easy runs. Um, probably just, yeah, no more than an hour now. And yeah, I'll do an hour tonight on the pavements. And then, yeah, just jumping on the turbo, nothing fancy. I'll probably go for a hike as well, uh, hike up the car for the pack, and pop in on the pub as well as on the gaff. Little sleep, just really recreate all that. Yeah. <laughs> Wander around a bit, stare at things for a bit. Go, oh, yeah. God, yeah, <laughs> yeah, just easy couple of weeks though. Maybe do some easy runs with some strides just to keep the legs alive. Uh, keep the strength work going as well. When they tick the spine off, your victory at the spine, or maybe a double. We can't like James Nobles. We're going to maybe say you could finish together. We'd be that would make me very um, happy. Gary, I'm at the end, no, 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 okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, have you got anything else planned for 2024? Yeah, uh, back to my residency at the Dragons Back. Uh, <gasps> oh. <laughs> 
Yeah, so yeah, that's my, that is my um, that is my uh, my plan for this year, and I will. A fit great in. year! What a great year! Just, yeah, so, just flying and the dragon's back. Is it? It's just two though. Yeah, I usually do that with ten. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep your powder dry, I and I will fit in any little races where I can. Then um, yeah, just. No pressure. But you're not shy. You will tip up with a local fell race too. You're not. It's not all about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like Macau races. Um, like doing the the, the races in the uh, in our South Wales and um, South Wales senior. Yeah, I won a I won a fell race um this year as well. A little one, like a twenty minute fell race. So. Oh my goodness. I can, I can be handy at the, the short <laughs> stuff as well. <laughs> I love it. <clears throat> you're gonna need that speed at that last hundred meters as yeah, you're definitely. coming into Kirk. <laughs> 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 yeah! Awesome. Uh, right, well, you, you've you got to go and do an hour run. We've got to wrap this up because otherwise you'll be like... Okay. Oh. Well, I'm just curious. I know Eddie's going to trigger it, but who's your money on? Have you got, apart from yourself, okay. Simon? Yeah, good. That's your, no, none your, of them. Who, no, just me. None of them. <laughs> <laughs> what about the ladies then? Sorry, we'll move away from the fellas. Ladies, um, we've, got, we've got Nikki, haven't we? Nikki and Elaine. And we've got Anna yeah. and the troop as well. So And a troop, yeah. Um, I'll be rooting for Anna. Yeah, every time. Yeah, I love Anna. What about you, Eddie? Uh, is Claire Bamworth on the start list? She is on the roster, yeah. Well, I mean, can anyone beat her? If she, yeah, well, she was so dominant last year, my goodness me. So if she does turn she up and she has so been... dominant. She's only got better. She's only got better. More to the front. She's like the antithesis of, um, is that the right word, of... Um, Lovely Simon, who's gone, you know, mustn't overtrain, must cross train. <laughs> and at the moment, I looked on her Strava last night. I don't follow her because it would give me such anxiety. And she's running 50K every day. And she's done that for like the last two weeks. Oh, wowzers. That's crazy. <laughs> It'd be lovely to see Anna Troop. And, you know, to be fair, any of you mentioned those two. And I think uh, Ellen Bissons on the start line, too. Yeah. Any of those ladies could, um, because you just you, you can't really plan it. My goodness me, this, the the odds just to get to the finish, let Any, alone perform. Anything happens in Spider Race. You know, remember that year where um, Young Keith won, where him went, yeah. Damo went, again, anybody fast went. And yeah. Then, uh, Eon was just, uh, he's just so happy when he realised yeah. he was in the lead. <laughs> <laughs> I love Eon's uh, mindset though, because when it's not a race, he turns it into an adventure. And he's just as happy. Well, I think yeah. he's just as happy. I'm not. Spe- I can't speak for him, but he definitely. When I was chatting to him at Middleton, he was pretty upbeat. He wasn't down in the dumps about it. I hope, being a northerner, yeah, I'd like to see Elaine Bisson um, take the win. And yeah, she had some minds yeah. actually. Vicky Savage, yeah, I'd love to see Vicky Savage do well too. For the men, though, come on, we're not going to ask you, Simon. Who's who would you like to see other than Simon, Eddie? Mm, I do. I've got a bit of a soft spot for Dougie's in this. He's been a he's been a third, fourth, fifth in many quite. Uh, I'm on team, I am on team Dougie as well. I can't. Yeah, yeah, I think he's no. his time's coming to shine, and he just needs a, he just needs a few people in front to falter a little, almost, doesn't he? Because he's solid. He's solid. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm, on, like I'm on the same. I'm on the same. The... Um, Scarver team as Dougie. Oh yes, yeah, he's, yeah. he's always giving me advice and stuff. So yeah, no, he's great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd like to see a... Dougie do well. James Nobles though, he's a lovely guy. James, I'd love to see James yeah. do well. You know, and also Dragons Back Race, yeah. non Traverse. Everybody do well. Everybody yes. finish. <laughs> It's a, no, it's, a, it's a hell of a lineup for the men's race. It's you know, they never, yeah. never had one like this. Yeah, so it's going to be great at that front. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Just, pretty wild. just keep that powder dry. Keep yeah. that powder dry. That's it. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be fascinating. Some serious, serious dot watching. We will all be um, glued, glued to the our PCs and smart, smart smartphones. Right then, should we do the quick five, Eddie? We've got more than five. Apologies, got quite a few. Poor Simon, you can't ask him all those. He's got to go for his run. It's okay, yeah, honestly, quick. i got time. <laughs> well, we know you've got a dog. He's, all, he's like, you too, stop arguing. So <laughs> stop. <laughs> well, we know you've got a dog, uh, but is your dog allowed on the sofa? He's definitely allowed on the sofa. It's his yes. sofa. <laughs> Simon for the win. Yeah, he, he, also has, he also has my bed. When I'm, when I'm working from home, he has my bed then as well. Excellent. Yeah. Oh, takes that's how it should be. Yeah. <laughs> if you are, uh, yeah, just curious, because obviously you, you say you race a 20 minute fell race and this multi day events and a continuous race like the spine race. But yeah, what's your favorite distance? You know, say Dragon's Back stages. So what's that, 40 miles? Yeah, yeah. I think that, that's my sweet spot. I think definitely. Um, I know, I know, I can just hammer myself for a forty miler. 
yeah. yeah, so that's I'm pretty comfy at doing. Yeah, I like that. I like, I like the 50k. I think that's a good, a good race distance. Going to rewind a few years, Simon. Your teenage years. What posters would be on your walls as a teenage boy growing up in Wales? Um, <laughs> I remember I had, a, I had a Jackass poster. I had a Black Sabbath poster. Yes. Oh, uh, there could be a this where yeah. the music choice could be going actually. Yeah, quite a lot of posters from Kerrang magazine. I remember we can have two weeks of metal. Naked, this is fantastic. Well. Quite a few naked women, I think. Oh my goodness. As <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> you do. All right. Uh, favorite, we don't want to offend anybody actually. Well, it's up to you if you answer this one. Favorite Christmas gift you received? Uh, this year, yeah. Oh, um, actually, you could go any if there's any kind of memory. I don't, yeah. My nan gave me an interest when she gave us, she gave all the family like survival kits, and in mine was like a, a box of tissues and a squeegee. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I wonder what were the other people's survival kits. <laughs> yeah, uh, we need uh, your nan to come on the podcast. <laughs> you could be crying, wiping surfaces down. I love it. Uh, <laughs> All right, yeah, your favourite scarper shoe. My favourite is, uh, is the Spin Planet. Yeah, I love Spin that. Planet. Super, super comfy shoe. Feels like a slipper and it's just, yeah, super fast. Yeah, it's cool. I love it. And it's a good looking shoe as well. And that's what they happened. burst on the scene, you know, ooh. Maybe four years ago, I hadn't re- I knew about Scarpa because they're kind of mountain footwear, but not for trail running. So yeah, literally, yeah, no, no, it's new. Yeah, it's, they were always like specified for like the Alps, the trails in the Alps. I wear their ski boots. They always specialised for, but now um, they've got good grip on them now, so that's why they've yeah. gone into the UK industry quite well now. Awesome. They've got that Finest T fell shoe, which is just brilliant. That's an excellent Ooh. shoe. Oh, love it. Okay, last question every week when we share this podcast over on Instagram. We need some music, Simon. We need some music for our Instagram story. What's okay. what's it gonna be? Um I think we'll go for a tune. It's like keep it within the theme of the spine race. So something about not sleeping. So you can maybe do like faithless insomnia. Oh, you pulled it back. I I love it. I love it. I thought you were going to say ACDC, rot my head off or something. <laughs> Rain in blood, Slayer. But <laughs> yeah. Are you, are, you to, are you listen to any music on the race? No, I don't know. I, I never listen to music running. No, something I've never yeah, never done or got into. No. I like listening to the squelching of bogs. <laughs> and the swearing as you yeah, <laughs> uh, Simon thank you so much for giving us uh, your evening when you know you could have been resting tapering running um, I know that uh, people who are running the spine will be listening to this and uh, will be waving you off and wishing you well for the spine but all of us listening and also will be following you you've just given us people that perhaps uh, hadn't heard you on a podcast before as well have got a little snippet of what you like and so it just makes that dot come to life as well so teen trails yeah. big big huge fan club there simon will be will be cheering you uh all the way keep it going yeah it's been a treat thanks for sharing oh, thank, thank you for having me guys thank you for the chat uh, yeah. cheers guys thank you and best of luck thank you take care uh, take care Best of luck to Simon. He'll just be about to start the spine when this goes out and anybody else perhaps towing the line, perhaps even listening to this while you're taking on one of the spine races. Is it too early to start checking the forecast, Gary asks? Uh, Yes, I would say. I tell you what as well, the forecast is very hard to check for the spine because you move the length of the country. So what, I've, what? Checked, I've checked Edel forecast. <laughs> as far as I've got. I think it's always raining in Edel, isn't it? It's like a little bowl. Of, well, apparently it's not, not wet. They're not really windy all week. So if they've got that right, then at least it could be an okay start. I've heard a lot of rain. There's a lot of flooding. You bought all that expensive kit. You might as well use it. I wonder if um, on reflection, if somebody did the spi- a winter spine and it wasn't full winter, they'd feel a bit shortchanged that they didn't have their eyebrows or frozen. Oh, I think that the the length of the race and the uh is enough that the weather plays I think you know whatever you'll feel pretty you won't go back going I don't feel that I worked that hard so I'm going <laughs> to yeah. again because it was a little bit easy for me. Tales from the trails first off Strava Club Aaron 
top of the charts again, but he's got company, Brendan Hendrick. Uh, totally unconnected, I think, but they both did a marathon every day last week and had identical mileage too, 183.9 miles. Yeah, well done, everybody. I still, still scratch my head. One week would be enough for me. And Aaron is just keep going and going and going. And yeah, no surprise, Aaron again for the time on feet. 36 hours, 48 minutes and 18 seconds. And June Hart took the elevation. 14,852 feet all the way down in New Zealand. Yeah, really good to see that. I think she might be doing... Is it the Tarawera Ultra or you can do it as an FKT? One of the comments was a recce for that route. So yeah, super interesting to see how that progresses. But yeah, well done. Uh, yeah, When people listen to the show on the other side of the planet, that really does blow my mind. Well done. Well done, everybody. And I'm absolutely loving all the wild we picks. They took on a life of their own this week, actually, Eddie. I wasn't expecting it, but yeah, quite a few maybe came in. Keep... I think maybe people had a dry window as well. So the last couple of weeks, people have been wild weeing and uh, in the moist, more moist than normal. <laughs> and so probably haven't had any views. But obviously this weekend, people were like, as they were squashing themselves. Or as Evie <laughs> says, as I'm doing my lady business. <laughs> <laughs> but it's great to think as soon as somebody uh, pulls their pants down, they think of the podcast. <laughs> but yeah, keep them coming in. And I saw Finley Wild solo unsupported Bob Graham round pretty much midwinter. I know it wasn't the shortest day, but no GPS. Goodness me. I know the course, well, definitely four legs pretty well. But without a GPS, I think I would still struggle. But yeah, 15 hours and 35 minutes. Fastest winter round ever. Well done, Finley. That is super, super inspiring. Yes, yeah, so all the Hummus 30. That used to be on New Year's Day. And I've done that race quite a few times, but the mud looked absolutely biblical this year on that coastal path. And I'm sure there must be a tales, a muddy tales from the trails somewhere out there from that race. Yeah, we love reading now your tales from the trails. So if you have a story that needs to be shared, then email it to hello at tandtrails.com. This Tales from the Trails came in as a review, but we thought it was so good and might uh, resonate with some people that we would read it out in our Tales from the Trails section. So here we go. A podcast that has changed my life, brackets, genuinely. I'd long been interested in ultra running and running of any kind, really. I've wanted to do an ultra since I was about 17 years old, but over 13 years later and a string of serious injuries from overtraining and undereating, following advice from those pesky Instagram influencers, I'd never got further than a half marathon. In 2023, I really decided to get serious about my training. I started listening to Tea and Trails after the algorithm recommended it to me. I am instantly hooked and binged to the back catalogue, keeping a little diary of all the nuggets of information and insight Eddie and Gary let slip into conversation. My relationship with my body changed. I started training in a healthier way. I volunteered on the spine race after hearing about Eddie's winter attempt. I stopped smashing myself into the ground and joined a running club. I start doing races and make friends with other runners. In December, a running club friend asks if I want to do longer distance races. And I say, yes, we decide on Punk Panther because we'd heard about them on Tea and Trails. I managed one of the hardest races I've ever done. 20 miles in some grueling and disgusting weather, taking an insane six hours and coming in very, very much last place. And I loved every second of it. I've got my first ultra booked for May and I haven't, touch wood, had a single injury in 2023. Tea and Trails has absolutely changed my life for the better. I know it's just a podcast, but it's much more than that to me. It's been a way of completely reframing my relationship with my body and my life. And I'm so glad it popped up on the algorithm. That's from Immy S93. Oh, Immy, that really touched Gary and I. And I had to read that before I could read it because the first time I read it, I got quite emotional. Um, but we're so glad you joined us. We're so glad you're here. You've done amazing things. And it sounds like you've got a bright future. Hop back on to tea, uh, Tales from the Trails when you've done your ultra in May and let yeah. us know how it goes. Yeah, thanks for reaching out. It was wonderful. Wonderful to read that. Keep those five-star reviews coming in, people. We love reading them out. And uh, just remember, we had a little incident, a little moment with the script. So if yours <laughs> hasn't been read out, we apologize. We will get to it. We just need to re-clarify a few things. I bought some more on that topic. I know we shouldn't perhaps mention it again. But uh, I bought some more Google storage, Gary, because I think I, think I followed it. 
it came I up see. On, yeah you can't edit this sheet anymore you've got no more storage and there was just a button that said delete like uh-huh. delete that and i and i obviously didn't press it but i thought i wonder i i don't think the boys would have pressed it but I know a little person with fast fingers that thinks they know everything about who she wants to go. Oh, on. throwing her under the bus. I can't believe oh, it. Oh, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> All right. but, Interesting. So, yeah. If you haven't, if we haven't read your review out, don't worry. It will be there. But do keep sending them in as well. It's not really a competition, this one. It's a bit of a giveaway. Yeah, we've been busy over on Patreon, added a couple of new tiers, and we are running the first of our Patreon only giveaways. All patrons who have joined at the legend level and above. Yeah, we've got quite a few. I think there's Toe on the Line, Legend, there's the organizer, and there's a few others. So yeah, if you're a legend and above, you'll be automatically entered into the draw. And on the 14th, we're we'll picking a winner at random, and you could win a pair of Shocks Open Air headphones. They are the headphones that I recently reviewed. So yeah, they have been previously enjoyed but only for a, a week okay, or two. Are you giving them a little clean <laughs> or maybe people would like that but, oh, okay. oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah thanks i've noticed that some people have um upped their pledge over on patreon they've moved up to the legend tier and some new people have joined too so yeah really really appreciate all that support and we've got some more headphones i think it's the shocks open run pro so when we've done this competition a few weeks time we'll do another so yeah we'll try and keep them coming Oh, that's the, uh, what the, what's that called? Housekeeping. Housekeeping out the way. I wish I had a housekeeper. <laughs> I was watching one of my terrible American reality shows and the guy had a housekeeper and then an assistant housekeeper and a nanny. And a gardener, probably. Oh, probably. I was like, imagine. All I want is someone really to, um, is to clean the bathrooms because I hate doing that and it's always done half-heartedly and do my food shopping because that's it I just oh because we mind the food shop you can't get food delivery so you have to go (sighs) to the shop and it just feels like it's taking the lifeblood out of me and it's energy it's steps I don't have to give and now with my new gym pushing the trolley (laughs) it's It's true Should we spill the beans on what our 2024 looks like? Ooh, what does it look like? We know we know a few of your things. First up for you, Gary. Who's first up? Is it me or you? Is it who's got the first race? I think it's me. Ooh, uh, well, Manchester it, Marathon is Vegas April on. April the 14th. Oh, it's me. So hopefully, fingers crossed, all things going well. Eddie's body stays intact. I am going to toe the line on the Northern Traverse this year, beginning of April. It's a little bit early for me because it's tricky with the running, the long running stuff. Um, I would prefer a race in May or June so that I could focus more on the skiing, but this opportunity came up. It's amazing route. I tell you what sort of swung it for me as well is that uh, when I was on the bike the other day, I Googled, sort of like looked for videos to watch the route and John Kinston um, had done had done the Northern Traverse and had made the most beautiful, if anyone is doing um, the race, has made an amazing vlog of his time on it. Oh, and his vo- I wasn't going to watch it because I thought, you know, that well, that's so sad, but I loved it. I loved hearing his voice again. I loved seeing his face. And I thought maybe that's a sign. That's a sign that he he's showing me the way to go. And and the more I saw the route, I mean, the year that that was, 2020, oh, I must see 2020, 2021, he did it. Ooh, I don't know. Um, uh, the weather was amazing. He talking about the heat. <laughs> oh my God, that is you could have well. a belter. You could have a belter, April. Wow. <laughs> I love coming from minus whatever in the Alps and going over. But the route looked amazing uh, and a real adventure. So that's what I'm sort of aiming towards. Um, we will see. <laughs> we'll see what happens in the next month or so. I'm popping over to Chamonix tomorrow because there's this amazing uh, podiatrist. Uh, Annie is also an osteopath. Finley went over last week because they have the kids have to have their boots blown out, their ski boots and insoles and stuff because they ski so much. 
they have to have really tight boots because they ski so fast. Their boot has to, the power that they put through, their boot has to fit perfectly. Um, so uh, he went over last week to go and see his doctor and um, he had all pictures and all of Killian or every single trail runner you know he's treated. So I'm going over next week to go and get him to check my whole body, check all the alignment, check my knee, which though it's like, fine i'm training i'm not uh, the occasional like little something isn't still quite okay. right i'm gonna go over and hopefully he's gonna be the guru and check me out and probably say you and killian are so similar your feet i can sort this out no problem and hopefully in february we're also going to meet up you and me and maybe a few invited guests to recce the northern traverse <laughs> I can't much, wait for that. Do as much as we can over four days, I think we're going to try. Keep meaning to message James Nobles. James, if you're listening and ask him, or Lizzie, actually. Lizzie um, Faithful Davis, she was a winner last year to say, which bits shall we, which bits are worth wrecking? Or which are just the nicest bits that we can run? I'm not that bothered about wrecking any fire tracks or bits that you actually have to you got to do the lakes, haven't you? But then in the scheme of the race, that might be busy. So nav-wise might not be as much But it's of a nice problem. to know. It's actually always nice to know what's next. Um, whatever bit of the course, it's never wasted. Like even if you've got people around you, it's always yeah. nice to know the unexpected. It's nice to recce. So we're, we're starting to plan that. And that's really exciting too. What about you, GT? I've got a big list here, actually. Um, so yeah, 2024 Manchester Marathon. Fingers crossed I can get on the start line. And good for age is the goal. Good for age time, which is 3.15. But I think really it needs to be like 3.07 to get me a good five to seven minutes under the, the threshold. Hopefully then that will be a successful entry for London Marathon in 2025. All county tops again. Fingers crossed we get on that start line. Me and Robbo, um, Lake 100. Of course, there's a bit of Bob Graham round chat, winter Bob Graham round chat, especially with all these other people doing smoke and fast ones. We're being seduced by that. Joss Naylor too. We might do Joss Naylor round. Uh, Rob was super keen on that and I'm piggybacking on it too. Maybe the arm, maybe grass may gallop. I'm not 100% sure actually. We've got to be quiet on um, chat. We'll see how the year pans out. No Dragon's Back race, unfortunately. So I won't be wrecked. So maybe a winter ultra. 13 valleys popped on our radar last week. And that is two showdown, months after Gary. The- Your showdown, you and me. I'm not going to enter anything after the Northern Traverse because I want to have a clear recovery time. Yeah, true. Well, yeah, this does, didn't give me much recovery. Lakeland 100 end of July. This okay. is end of September. So two well, months. The ground. That would be excellent. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I first saw it, I thought, well, I did the Dragon's Back race early September. So this is a few more weeks to recover. Uh, but yeah, I like it's the I'll check the elevation profile, roughly the same elevation per distance as the Lake 100. So it is spicy. Yeah, I really do fancy that. And the Old Water Way 50k, I'm not too sure if that's his official name, but that is about a month before the Lake 100. So that could be a good last long run on similar some of it will be actually Lake 100 terrain but generally similar terrain yeah great warm-up event for Lake 100 so that is the plan there's a few others out there um but yeah focusing on the roads initially with a few trips to the lakes i don't want to neglect i'm really had some FOMO with all the wild wee picks um but after after <laughs> after manchester marathon just hitting that well i'm gonna have crazy doms because all the county tops is in may Manchester Marathon's April. Oof, I might be fit, but I will not be mountain fit. I I'll, I'll, should be okay elevation-wise because I am doing quite a few hill sessions on the treadmills, but going down will take its toll, especially because there's quite a lot of elevation on all county there's tops. There's a lot of really steep downhill on that old Yeah, mountain. yeah, yeah. So I might be fit, but not mountain fit. But like I say, finish Manchester Marathon and then hit the Lakeland 100 route. Maybe some fell races. I need to put my FRA membership to good use. Yeah, you need to if you're not gonna if you if you're denying the LDWA of their <laughs> my presence. <laughs> but that's it. Yeah, super exciting as always. Maybe some more towards the end of the year. I think a winter ultra might be good, but you know the thirteen valleys might probably wipe me out, and then that'll be me done. That'll be me done. I don't want because the Dragon's Back race really has scuppered cross country for me. Actually, I'm not really. I didn't do the early part of the season, and now I'm starting training. I've got a bit of training anxiety or race anxiety. Sorry to be on that start line. I'm super busy too, so there's various reasons why I've not actually done any cross country this year, and I don't want to repeat that again 
in 2024, 2025. So don't be greedy. Maybe keep the winter clear for cross country. That's it. Another show in the bank. Thanks for tuning in and thanks to Precision Fuel and Hydration for sponsoring this week's show. 100% worth popping over to precisionhydration.com. We mentioned it at the beginning of the show, but the Knowledge Hub and case studies are well worth checking out. Don't forget, you can book your free 20-minute chat with one of their sports scientists too. Use code T24 for 15% off your first order. Thanks to our partners and patrons too. We couldn't do this without you and your ongoing support. Be kind to your future self. Breathe and believe and progress, not perfection. And don't forget to like, subscribe, follow and give us a share. Best of luck if you're tapering for any of the spine races. I don't envy you. Um, <laughs> or perhaps you're just getting started on a new training program. Perhaps you're being brave, starting a new job or making a big decision. Whatever you're doing, keep sharing these pics. Keep wild weeing and keep listening to the UK's number one trail running podcast. Warm yourself up with a cup of your favorite brew. Disaster. I've run out of decaffeinated tea bags. I am hitting the caffeine. Ooh, hard. Buzzing. <laughs> um, buzzing my name is eddie sutton and i'm gary twits and that was episode 54 of the tea and trails podcast